lift up your holy name. Lord, we thank you for this moment, this opportunity. As we're preparing our hearts and minds to receive from you on tonight. Father God, we say have your way. We repent of all unrighteousness. Father, we ask that you would cleanse us from all of our iniquities. In the name of Jesus, baptize us, Father, in your Holy Spirit. Cleanse us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. We humble ourselves before you on tonight, saying, Lord, have your way. Do what you want to do, God. God, you woke us up today for a purpose. You brought us here for a reason. So, Father, we humbly say, have your way tonight. Whatever is in us that's not like you, we ask that you would take it out in the name of Jesus. Strengthen us where we are weak. Give us joy where there is sorrow. Bring healing and wholeness to our hurt in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you would lift up every hung down head. Lord, we know that you're able to provide a way where there is no way. Do it for us, God. We know that you blessed us before the foundation of this world was formed. And so, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for being who you are. Our bright and morning star. Thank you <laughs> for being our bridge over troubled waters. Thank you for being our light in the midst of darkness. Lord, we say thank you. Father, I ask even now that you will send an anointing into this place that makes teaching and learning your word easy. In the name of Jesus. Bind the strong man on every side who come but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Lord, we thank you even now for your presence in this place. We thank you for your awesomeness. We thank you that, God, you are our help, our health, and our strength. We love you, Lord. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody that can and will, will you just put your hands together and just give God a hand clap of praise? And if you don't mind, we just open up your mouth and just say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. And while you're telling him that you thank him, can you just think of anything that you are grateful for on today? Whatever it is, can you just tell him what you're grateful for? Lord, I thank you that I'm alive today. What are you grateful for? Lord, I thank you that my son turned 17. What are you thankful for on today? That he allowed us to travel from far and near to be in this house, and we are glad. If you don't mind, we just give God another hand clap of praise right there. Glory, hallelujah. I am so excited about being in the house of the Lord one more time uh, if it had been up to the enemy none of us would have been here <laughs> but god kept us and he covered us and we are so uh, excited about it uh, god has been sharing some some deep revelation with us concerning what is the church uh, i knew what my assignment was to teach it but he has been showing so much he has been showing so much to me and sharing so much with me concerning uh, what is the church, y'all. It is just mind-blowing just to understand that we're just still in the beginning of chapter 1. Amen. And it's so much more that God is going to uh, reveal unto us. Amen. And so we're going into part 3 of what is the church. And we understand in chapter 1 of Ephesians that the church is likened to a body. And before we begin, if you would grab your vision and your mission statement. I'm going to read our mission statement. 
Amen. I ask that y'all will read it with me if you can. Amen. It should be in your folder. It says, so it's a vision and mission statement. And we're just going to read the mission of anointed praise and worship ministries. If we don't know our mission, then how can we complete it? <laughs> Amen. The mission of anointed praise and worship ministries. Anointed praise and worship ministries seeks to become a global voice along a lifetime, long, lifelong journey of spiritual and economic hope, encouragement, and empowerment to people locally, nationally, and around the world. Amen. And our motto is, we are a light in the midst of darkness. God bless you, and thank you for reading along with me concerning our mission. Uh, the church is liking, likened to a body. Our foundational scripture is Ephesians chapter 1. Let's go there. Verses 1 through 6. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. I pray y'all brought your thinking caps tonight. Amen. Because there's much going to be shared with us. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. And when you have it, say amen. I pray that you all had a blessed week so far. And that God is answering your prayers and that ways are being made for you in the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1. Are we there yet? Amen. amen, amen. I was waiting on a few more. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are in Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. The word of the Lord is already blessed. And so uh, in Ephesians, in Ephesians, uh, there's just a highlight. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, uh, we see the creating of the body of Christ. And in verses 1 through 6, in which we just read, we see how it was fashioned, formed, and constructed. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 identifies for us uh, that the church is likened, uh, that it is parallel, or that it simply resembles a body. And, and in the chapters to come, uh, being chapters 2 through 6, we're going to learn that in Ephesians chapter 2, that the church is likened to a temple. The church is likened to a temple. Later on this week, we'll have some bigger handouts for you all. So if you need to write it at the bottom, just write it at the bottom. Uh, but the church is likened to a temple in Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 3, we're going to learn that the church is likened to a mystery. That the church is likened to a mystery. In Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to learn that the church is likened to a new man. Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to learn that the church is likened or similar to a new man. In Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to learn that the church is likened to a bride. Ephesians 5, the church is likened to a bride. 
and in Ephesians chapter 6, last but not least, we're going to learn that the church is likened to a soldier. Raise your hand if I need to go back over that again. Ephesians chapter 2, the church is likened to a temple. Ephesians 3, the church is likened to a mystery. In Ephesians chapter 4, the church is likened to a new man. Ephesians chapter 5, the church is likened to a bride. And last but not least, in Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to learn that the church is likened to a soldier. I shared all of that with you to say that there is much to be learned about the church. But also understand through revelation knowledge, uh, our foundation will be sure. And our confidence and faith in God will be a force uh, to be reckoned with. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. A lot of times the enemy is able to wreak havoc in our lives and in different places because uh, our, our foundation is not sure. We're not exactly sure who we are and whose we are. We may, may not fully understand how to uh, utilize our weapons or how to resist the devil, submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he flee from us. And like I stated before, this is just foundational concerning what is the church. There is so much more uh, for us to learn concerning the house of God. Uh, now, with that being said, let us look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Keep your Bibles open. Uh, we're going to use them tonight. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, and the Bible reads, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Before we go any further, there are five things that took place on our behalf uh, before the world was formed. Uh, and can somebody raise their hand and share with me, what was those five things that took place on our behalf uh, before the world was formed? And for those of you who have been watching us on social media, on, our, on the social media platform, just Begin to type them in the comments. If you're on YouTube, begin to tap, type them in the chats. What are those five things that we've been talking about that, that happened uh, for us before the foundation of the world was formed? Anybody? He blessed us. He chose us. He predestinated us. He adopted us. And he accepted us. Thank you so much. He blessed us. He accepted us. He predestinated us. He adopted us. Accepted us and he adopted us. Y'all looking at me strange. What's on your notes? Praise the Lord. Amen. What's on your notes? <laughs> so he blessed us. He chose us. He predestinated us. He adopted us and he accepted us. These are the five things that took place before the foundation of the world was formed. These things are automatic things that take place when we are in Christ Jesus, okay? For the past several weeks, uh, we've been dealing with the truth that he blessed us, as well as the identification of those spiritual blessings. Uh, tonight, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the truth that he chose us. Can somebody say he chose us? What does it mean to be chosen? Okay, let me simplify this question. What does the word choose mean? We, to pick? Thank you. We have some dictionaries on the table. Some of you all have it on your phone. What does it mean the word chose means? She said to pick. Select? Okay. You go to the store, you, you just pick up anything, or do you go in there and choose what you want? Uh, 
is a variety of things. You pick which one you want. You don't just go in the grocery store and just start knocking everything off the shelf in your basket. You, you got rotten apples and everything. I, I want every, No, 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 no. You choose. So being chosen is very, very, very important. This word choose means uh, to select from a number of possibilities. To select from a number <laughs> of possibilities. That's a praise break right there. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We wait on the organ to play. Amen. Amen. No, we are. He, he chose us. We've been selected from a number of possibilities. Don't, don't you feel special? Amen. Think about it. Amen. The King of kings and the Lord of lords pick you out of all the other possibilities. But everybody else said we're good for nothing. Everybody else trying to make us feel like there is no value to who we are. But here it is. God chose us. The creator of the universe, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He chose us. He selected us from a number of possibilities. Can somebody just say, thank you, Lord? Just think about that, y'all. He chose us out of everything else. He chose you. The Apostle Paul provides the first five reasons uh, why we, the believers of Jesus Christ, are to praise God. We already stated because, number one, he did what? He blessed us. I'm going to keep bringing this up. I want this thing so deep in your spirit. Why are you sleeping? You quote it in your sleep. They're like, somebody don't walk in you. Who are you talking to? He blessed us. He, he chose. Come on, somebody. He chose us. He predestinated us. Uh, you in your sleep saying it. He adopted us. He accepted us. So we as the believers of God ought to praise God because, number one, he did what? He, he blessed us. And secondly, he chose us. So that's, that's all I need to know. Uh, I, I remember the older saying, they say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Or when I think, I thank. That's the other one. When I think of something, I thank him. Well, that's a good reason to thank him right there because he blessed me regardless of who I was. Oh, wow. He chose us regardless of who we were. Yes, ma'am. For choose to have a preference for. To have a preference for. So God's election is a theme throughout the Bible. His election is a theme throughout the Bible. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. For those of you who are tuning in with us on tonight, God bless you and welcome. Please take a moment to like, share, tag uh, this classroom experience at least five times. Give us grace. Tag and at least share it at least five times with others. And for those of you who have already shared it, amen. Genesis ch chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. Will somebody put that in the comments for me? Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. And when you have it, say amen. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. That part right there, y'all, blows my mind every time I read it. He said, Go somewhere that I'm going to show you. <laughs> Abram didn't even know where he was going. He just obeyed God. He said that I will it unto a land that I will Amen. show you. Some of us waiting on him to show us all the signs before we do anything. Amen. God said, go, and Abram went. Verse 2, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou 
shalt be a blessing. Not only am I going to bless you, but you're going to be so blessed that you're going to be able to bless others. Verse 3, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now the Lord said unto Abram, he didn't say it to everybody. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth shall be blessed. Can somebody say, God chose me? God chose me. Out of all of the people that were there, <laughs> God chose one man. See, we think we need a crowd to go. He chose one person. We think we need everybody on board before we can, we can move forward. He said he chose one person and told that one person to go. And he said, and I will make of thee, I will make of you a great, what, nation. Wait, wait a minute. You, God, you're going to take this one man and multiply, Dr. Say, Dr. Clay said multiply. It was something else go beyond multiplication. I don't know what it was. He's going to take this one man and make of thee a great nation. He said, and you don't have to worry about anything else. What did he say? I will what? Bless thee. Y'all still there? Genesis 12, verse 2. What did he say? And I will what? Bless thee. God took, made it personal. He said, you ain't got to wait on somebody else. I will bless you because I chose you. <laughs> and I'm going to make your name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Can somebody say, God chose me? God chose me. Let, let us go to uh, Deuteronomy. Tonight is the introduction to he chose me. So we're just setting the stage. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. I'm going to get Dr. Come with the New Living Translation after I read the King James. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. We're still in the Old Testament. Can somebody put that on the screen for me? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. And when you're there, say amen. amen. For thou art an holy people, Unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath what? Oh my God. <laughs> the Lord God, the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. I need y'all to get this, y'all. Oh, Lord have mercy. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he will keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty, mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt? Know, therefore, that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that what? Love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generation with them that love him and keep his commandments. He said, if you love me, you'll do what? Keep my commandments. We love him when we are in Christ. The, could you read the New Living Translation for me? Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 6 through 9 in the New Living Translation, it reads, For you are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God. 
Of all the people on earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be his own special treasure. The Lord did not set his heart on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other nations, for you were the smallest of the nations. Rather, it was simply that the Lord loves you, and he was keeping the oath that he had sworn to your ancestors. That is why the Lord rescued you with such a strong hand from your slavery and from the oppressive hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. Amen. 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 Is this starting to make sense, you all? That, 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 that he chose me? Can somebody say, God chose me? He, 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 he chose us regardless uh, of who we were. He redeemed us out of the hand of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh of Egypt. Pharaoh, king of Egypt. That word Pharaoh, this is just a golden, a golden nugget. Uh, that word Pharaoh means house of bondage. Okay, Pharaoh. There were, that, that's a house of bondage. There were many pharaohs, okay? They called them pharaohs, but it was a house of bondage. So he said he redeemed us out of the house of bondmen from the hand of the house of bondage of Egypt, <laughs> from slavery, from, uh, from idol worshiping. Come on, y'all. From, from sin and shame, from all kind of, he, he, he redeemed us from that. He kept, he, God is faithful. He kept his covenant. He said, regardless of what you have done, since you've been on earth, I've been faithful. I've kept my covenant. I chose you. Don't you know people, praise God, have done all kind of low down and dirty stuff, but as soon as they get in Christ, it seems like the whole world opened up to them like they've never done anything before. Because God is faithful and he keeps his covenant. He, when he chose you, he don't change his mind. Regardless of what we do or how we act, God does not change his mind. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. When you have it, say amen. 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 For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath what? Chosen thee <laughs> to be a peculiar people unto who? Himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. God has chosen us to be a peculiar people. That word peculiar simply means special, like it said a moment ago. When you go and research, it's going to bring you right back to that thing, special. Don't stop where it says strange because you'll get thrown off. Keep digging when you deal with the word peculiar because it'll say strange, but keep dealing, deal, digging and it is going to lead you to that word special. He has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Do you, does it say anything different? Pretty much the same. Special, it says what now? We are a special treasure to himself. <laughs> Little old, can I, little old me, a special treasure unto God himself? The devil didn't want us to know this, y'all. That we are a special treasure unto God. Do anybody have any questions, any comments, anything they would like to share right along in here? However, I particularly choose the green apples. 
because I feel that the green apples are more ripe, they're more firm, and they give more minerals. Some people choose red apples, and when they choose the red apple, they might choose the one that's more soft and more easy to eat, or they might choose the one that's more hard and more firm. Um, so if it was uh, nothing but red apples, I still would particularly choose a red apple that is firm and that is hard. So it just reminds us of being, that's what I'm thinking of right now, I'm uh, of us being chosen. I, I'm the green apple yeah. out of the apples that are out there that he made. about knowing that you are a special treasure to God? Praise the Lord. Family, our Heavenly Father wants us to realize that he chose us. He has selected us. Uh, he personally picked you and me. And because of this truth, uh, and I need everybody, and I do mean everybody. I see some of y'all researching, but take a moment. <laughs> I need everybody just to clap your hands, amen, and tell the Lord, thank you for he chose us. Lord, I thank you that you chose us. We have to learn what to be grateful for. We, we easily clap over the house, the car, the job, the, the bank, account, bank account, the this, that, and the others. But I just want to say, Lord, I thank you for, for choosing me, for choosing us. Uh, even Jesus said it in the gospel, uh, according to John chapter 17, verse 24. Let's go there. John 17, 24. When you have it, say amen. John, New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, then John, chapter 17, verse 24. Amen. Jesus said, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For I, thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. He said, God, you love me before the foundation of the world. Give me, <laughs> let them be with me, the people you've given to me, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Does it read differently? It's the same. Does anybody else have a different translation that they would like to read? Because I don't want to, this is pastoral teaching, so I don't want to feel like I'm up here lecturing on Sunday morning. I want to I want to hear some feedback. I want to hear from the audience. Amen. Does anybody else have a different translation? All the same. Okay. First Peter, moving right along. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Is this, amen. Amen. amen, this 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 good? Okay, 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 okay. For as much as you know that you that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. 
He was foreordained. Christ was slain before the foundation of the world. What does that mean? That he was slain before the foundation of the world. What does that mean? Sir? He said God knew it was supposed to happen. Okay, anyone else? What does that mean? That he was slain before the foundation of the world. God had already provided a way of escape. Is that what you said? Okay, anybody else? Jesus the lamb for the sacrifice. Uh-huh. Amen. What if it's what if it means exactly what it said? Okay. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Lord Jesus. What does that word slain mean? Killed. Killed. Okay. And the Bible said that he was slain when? Talk to me before the foundation of the world. So what does that mean? He was literally slain before we got here. Amen. It was already done in the spiritual realm before it, went, it took place in the physical realm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it was already done just like in Genesis when he created man from the dust of the earth. Amen. Did y'all remember reading that in Genesis chapter 1? Amen. Amen. Okay, but then in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, then he breathed life into the dirt suit. Amen. So at first it was just dirt in Genesis chapter 1 when he created the man. But in Genesis chapter 2, then he gave the dirt life. Amen. Jesus was slain in the spiritual realm way before the earth was formed, way before we got here. Amen. It just took place in the physical where the people could see it, but it already happened. Like the Bible said, he was slain before the foundation of the world. Just like he chose us before the foundation of the world. We weren't here yet on the earth. Amen. But we were already in his spirit. Is this, make, is this making sense or do I need to go deeper? Is this, is this helping? Because I don't want to just, just run through the Bible study and then you go home with more questions and call me later. I, I, I want to make sure we got this, what, what's really being said, that when he, that he chose us. Before the foundation of the world, before we were ever born, we were already chosen. Amen. In these passages of Scripture, uh, we see God's choice in election occurred uh, before time and creation. Y'all making me work tonight, praise the Lord. Uh, uh, his, his choosing occurred before time and before creation. Okay, Amen. emphasizing that this choice uh, was based on God's sovereign purpose, not human merits. Okay, the choosing of us was based on God's sovereign purpose. Here, here it is right here in First Peter, uh, 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 who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last time for you. We were born at a certain time to fulfill the sovereign purpose of God. If we had been born in the 1800s with some of our attitudes, we wouldn't have made it to where we are right now. They'd have cut, all, they'd have cut our feet off, leg off. Come on, y'all. We trying to run. Amen. Cut your hands off. Y'all, come on now. Amen. Don't play. Amen. I'm not making light of slavery, but, but God knew that there wasn't a time that I needed to be born in. I don't know about it. He knew I didn't need to be born right there picking cotton. He knew. I couldn't handle it. Amen. And so although we were we was chosen before the foundation of the world, God placed us on earth for a time such as this. This is his sovereign purpose for us to be alive right now, today, sitting in class. It's all God's divine purpose. Therefore, the appropriate response is to praise God for such blessings. Oh, come here, King David. Y'all know King David, don't you? Y'all heard of him before, haven't you? 
Uh, the writer of Psalm 122, verse 1. Uh, some of y'all can, y'all can quote this. Come on, Kojic family. Uh, where he declared, I was glad when they said unto me. Come on, y'all. Let us go into the house of the Lord. He said, I was glad when they said, I can go to, as bishops say, I was glad when they said, oh, let's go to church. Amen. Family, it's truly a blessing to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. I, was, I had posted a couple of hours ago, I had checked in a couple of hours ago that I was here at the church. And it's just so peaceful just to, just to be here at the church. I was just doodling and, you know, messing with stuff, you know. But just to be in this house. It's a blessing to be among God's children. Uh, Lift in the name of the Lord. That's why the enemy, I, I keep saying this, and I, because I want us to recognize it, that it's easy for us to go to Walmart. Oh, my God. It's easy to go to the mall. It's easy to go to whatever, whatever. But when it comes to going to church, even though I want to be here, Still is a battle sometimes. Anybody else? It, although I want to be in, in, in the house of God, it, sometimes it's, I'm, I'm moving slow and I'm trying to get my thoughts together, trying to get myself in order. But I, I, I want to be here, but if I was trying to go anywhere else, I wouldn't have that same battle. Uh, there's nothing like being in church. <laughs> there's no place I'd rather be than to be at church, oh. the Bible says, for better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. God's election, uh, his choosing of us is not without an end goal. It's not without an end game. He didn't just choose us uh, just to choose us. He didn't select us and pick us out of all the apples at the, at the supermarket. He didn't just pick us just to pick us, but he picked us for a purpose. He picked us uh, for a reason. Uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Jeremiah 29 and 11. When you have it, say amen. I'm taking my time because I want you all to see this. And those of you who are watching online, it's Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think Toward you. Who is I? For I know. Who is that I right there? God. For I know the thought that I think toward you. It don't matter what anybody else think. I know the thoughts I think. It don't matter what the thoughts you think, because sometimes our thoughts may not be right. He said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. The New Living Translation says, uh, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster. Stop saying the Lord wanted something bad to happen to you. When bad stuff happened, come up on us, wait, God must wanted it me to go. God must wanted this to happen. This must what it was supposed to be. He said, I have plans for you. There are plans for good. And not for a disaster. To give you a future and a hope. He said, yeah, you're going to go through some stuff in life that, that, that may not feel good, that we may not like. But I have plans for you. Plans for good stuff. Can somebody say good stuff? Good stuff. Uh, the Apostle Paul continues on by saying in Colossians chapter 1, verse 22. Preacher, you gave us a whole lot of scriptures. Sure did. Colossians chapter 1, verse 22.
Let me know when you make it there. Colossians 1, 22, New Testament. Amen. I hear you, Elder. God bless you. Thank you for being there. He said that the purpose of those what? What did it say? Colossians chapter 1, verse 22. That the purpose of those what? Chosen by God is that we should be holy and what? Unblameable before him. That we should be holy and blameless before him. So that means we, I, all of my energy shouldn't be on what the next person thinks. <laughs> but my energy and my effort should be mostly on what God said, that we should be well holy and blameless. I was watching this show uh, earlier today. Uh, y'all forgive me, men. All men, please forgive me. I was watching this show with Dr. Clay today called Lifetime Moving Network. Men, please forgive me. That is not the show for us. But I, I was watching it, and this young girl, he got expelled from school. And so I think the, they moved her and her mom moved to a new area, uh, middle of the school year. She got a new school, very smart, uh, very talented, uh, were doing great things. But she allowed the, what other people had to say, she allowed peer pressure to cause her to go back to using drugs to go back to lying to her mother, skipping class, and staying out all night. She was more concerned about what they were saying, and it almost killed her because she was in a coma for about a month, trying to fulfill what everybody else thought she should do. The pressures of everybody else almost killed her, but if she had kept her mind on God, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Because people to turn up, people to pull us all kinds of directions if we allow them to. With the privilege of election comes the responsibility woo, of living according to God's word. He didn't, he didn't call us. I'm just going to use titles. just for. He didn't call us to be an elder just to be an elder and do what we want to do. But that, that, that title, with that title comes a responsibility. Come on, y'all. Uh, 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 just, just being a child of God, period, without a title. Because when we get to heaven, we, there's no titles. Just being a child of God, period, comes with a responsibility of living according to God's world, word. If we are his children, comes a responsibility. That means I can't do what I want to do as a child of God. Amen. We can't live how we want to live as children of God. We can't go everywhere we want to go as children of God. We can't say everything we want to say as children of God. There is a responsibility. Regardless if you think nobody looking, guess what? Somebody saw you. Amen. And that could have been the main person that God was going to use to draw thousands to his kingdom. But because they saw you doing the boogie woogie, <laughs> they're lost. And they may never make it back around to where God wants them to be. Isn't it important that we understand that we have a responsibility Amen. as children of God, Amen. as individuals, as well as collectively, as the church, we have a responsibility. God desired not, not only to forgive our sins, but also to conform us to the image of his beloved son. He said, listen, you pray, ask for forgiveness. I'm going to forgive your sins. But we're not going to stay right there. Now that you have been forgiven and now that you are in Christ, now I need to conform you to the image of my son. Why? Because when we're praying and we're calling on God, he hears our voice and he looks. He's he not looking for the pastor, the apostle, the elder, the missionary, the mother, the deacon, the lay member. He's looking to see Jesus in us. He's looking to see his God Jesus' image in us. Amen. That's what he's looking to see. He, 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 he don't see these dreads. <laughs> he's trying to see if he can see Jesus. So when he saves us, he also wants to conform us to the image of his son. Family, God has a purpose and a reason for choosing us. Uh, his choice of you was... 
and is not in vain. We're not here by accident. We're not here by happenstance or coincidence. But we're here because God chose it to be so. Uh, we're not alive today in the presence of the Lord uh, because of a lucky break or because of some object, you know, like a rabbit foot uh, or four-leaf clover. I remember as a kid out there looking for a four-leaf clover or some so-called lucky socks on which good fortune is supposed to depend on. The devil is a liar. Amen. We're here because God chose us in him uh, before the foundation of the world was formed. Tonight is only supposed to be uh, the introduction of the truth that uh, he chose us. But it's, it's, it's like, like the scales are being taken off with so many eyes to this truth. Like we never, we really didn't understand that God, it's like it's, it's, it's new. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me God really, he chose me? Out of all the demeaning stuff we hear, all the, 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 the damaging stuff we hear about ourselves, all of the negativity we hear, it's like it's, it's, it's mind-blowing to know that God, cho God chose us. He loved us so much <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe it in him should not perish but should have uh, everlasting life. Family, I don't know who else is excited as I am on tonight. But I thank God for life. I, 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 thank, I, thank, I thank God for life. Just yesterday, yesterday evening, I believe, 51 people they found dead in the back of a diesel being brought over to the United States, I suppose, from Mexico. They found him in San Antonio. 51 people, the truck was left abandoned on the side of the road. 51 people in the back of a truck. I'm supposing they suffocated and died in this truck just the other day. 51 people, all ages. I was just reading earlier today where the father left his child in the car and went in the house, I suppose, and the baby died, and he went online with the talking about suicide. When the people finally got to his house, he had got the baby out the car, brought the baby in the house, laid the baby beside him. The baby had already passed in the car. Then he took his own life. I'm sharing this because, listen, y'all, we really do have a battle, and we really do have something to be grateful for. And I just thank God for life. <laughs> <laughs> not just any life, not just any life, but life that Jesus came to give us. Uh, for Jesus said that I come that you might have what? Life. And have it what? More abundantly. He came that we may have life. And that word abundantly also means uh, generously. <laughs> he came that we may have life and that we may have it more uh, lavishly. I understand that this is pastoral teaching. I'm about to close. But above all that, I also understand that this is our Father's house. Therefore, he can do whatever he wants to do whenever he gets ready to do it. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. Amen. I want to share something with you all. <laughs> I want to share this testimony with you all. Then I'm going to close. I had this dream several years back. Uh, I was laying in this very big bed, probably about as wide as this stage, a little wider. I was laying in this very big bed, same music. And in front of me, it was a big window. So the windows from that wall to that wall, just one big window. 
that what woke me up from my sleep, I'm in the dream, but what woke me up from my sleep in the dream, it was a thunderstorm going on outside. So I woke up, got out of the bed, and started walking toward this big window. It seemed like I was real high, like the, the whatever room I was in, it was like real high now. So I started walking toward the window, and when I got close to the window, a big old hand came through the window and grabbed me. I'm talking about one of them hands bigger than King Kong, but it was a man hand. And so I, I've never forgotten that. I've had this, I had this dream so many years ago. It scared me and I woke up. But as I was preparing for this lesson and preparing to share this lesson with you, it came back to my memory <laughs> that he chose me. Here I was resting in the midst of chaos and confusion. And I got up to go closer to the chaos and confusion. And he reached through the window and he grabbed me. He chose me. So what am I trying to say to you all, family? God chose you. <laughs> he came and got you from wherever you were for a time such as this. So once again, I say, Lord, thank you for choosing me. Thank you for putting your hands on me. Thank you for calling me by name. Thank you for never forgetting me. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being loving. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for being long suffering. Thank you for being kind. Thank you for being gracious. Thank you for being mercy, lo merciful. Lord, I say thank you for choosing me. Glory to your name. Even while I was in sin and shame, God, you chose me. You called me by name. The Bible said no man come except he draw him. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for choosing me. I thank you for choosing us. I thank you for choosing anointed praise and worship ministries. Church of God in Christ. I thank you for choosing anointed praise and worship ministries locally as well as worldwide. I thank you for ever born again believer that is connected to this church, that is connected to this movement. Lord, I pray even now, God, that you will open up the windows of heaven. Pour them out of blessing they don't have room enough to receive. Lord, any and every hindering spirit that may be standing in their way, God. Lord, I pray right now that you will bind it in the name of Jesus. Stir up the gifts in us. Stir up the fire under our feet. Because, God, the world is dying. It's going quickly to hell in a handbasket. But, Father, you have called us to be a witness to a dying world. You have called us to be a light in the midst of darkness. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. And we ask that you would keep us and cover us. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. At this time, Dr. Clay is going to come. We're going to prepare for the ministry.